Hi guys. Today we're learning a new type of linear equation. So last week we learned about point slope form and point slope form is only one type of equation that we can write where that equation when graphed would give us a nice straight line. So today we're learning our second type and that's called slope intercept form. Now this one you've probably heard of before. Um, this is our probably most common type of linear equation. In fact, some of you last week were even trying to write everything in slope intercept form, even though we hadn't learned it yet in this class. Um, and so slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And in slope intercept form, the x and the y will stay letters, just like they did in point slope form. And then what we need to do, our job, is to figure out what is the m and what is the b. So now the m stands for slope, which we've been working with um, actually this whole time because slope was our very first lesson for this chapter. The b stands for the y-intercept. This is where the equation gets its name from, right? It's called slope-intercept form because it has the slope and it has an intercept. Now, we are usually given um, some things to write an equation with, but we're not usually given a y-intercept. So because we're not usually given a y-intercept, we need to have a process to create slope-intercept form. It's not going to be just like throw numbers in there and then poof, you have the answer. Uh, you're going to need to do a little bit of work, a little bit of math, a little bit of calculating um, to get slope-intercept form. But this is our generic, what we're, what we're going for. We're hoping for y equals a number x plus another number. One last thing I want to point out before we do some examples is that the letter y is completely by itself. There's no other letters over here, which means that when you're writing something in slope-intercept form, you can't have any numbers or even symbols. Like you can't even have a negative sign in front of your letter Y. That would make it not in slope-intercept form. So the goal when creating slope-intercept form is to move everything away from the letter Y and onto the other side of the equation. All right, so let's try some problems. So here we are told to write an equation in slope-intercept form, and I'll write that form back up here in case you have forgotten it. Y equals mx plus b. Okay, and um, they have given us some information. Now what they've given us is a slope, uh, which is something we definitely need for slope-intercept form. And they've given us a, a point, but the point is just a random point, a random dot somewhere on the graph, it's definitely not the y-intercept. So I can't just, again, throw the numbers in there and get my answer. I will need to do a little bit of calculating. And so the method that I'm going to use is actually very similar to the method that I used last week for point slope form. And that is I'm going to use a altered slope formula to write something in slope intercept form. And so here's our slope formula that we learned last week. I told you guys last week, this is the most important formula that you're going to learn because uh, we're going to use it pretty much every single day for every single problem. Now I've altered the slope formula a little bit. I've taken out the twos because when we're using the slope formula to write a linear equation, we are going to leave the first letter Y and letter X a letter. We're not going to plug numbers in there. For the slope formula, I will be plugging in my ordered pair. So negative 4 will be my x1, which will go down here. And then 1 will be my y1, which will go up here. And I'm going to use my slope. Now remember, when you're writing your slope, you should write it as a fraction. So even though it's a whole number, negative 5, I'm not going to put a negative 5 over here. I'm going to put the fraction negative 5 over 1. A couple things I want to point out about just the setup. So if you get the setup right, then the rest of it should be relatively easy. Um, again, the first thing in each fraction is a letter, so it's y over x. I did y minus y1, so it's y minus the 1. And then for my x, it was x minus a negative 4. And when you minus a negative, it turns into plus a positive. So notice that the numbers in my fraction have the opposite sign of what they had in the ordered pair. The other thing I want to point out again is that my slope is also a fraction. So when your slope is a whole number, just write it as a fraction over one. 
And I took my negative sign and I attached it to the top number. So whenever you have a slope that's negative, always attach it to one of the numbers. I will always attach my negative sign to the top number. Um, it just makes more sense to me up there. So I put my negative with the top number five. I did not put it on the bottom with the one and I did not float it in front of my fraction. Now, from here, we're going to do something a little bit different than what we did last week. So when you're trying to find slope-intercept form, we're not just going to slide the x plus 4 over. What we're going to do, this is a proportion. It's two fractions that are equal to each other. So we're going to cross-multiply. When I cross-multiply, this 1 will multiply with the y minus 1. And this x plus 4 will multiply with the negative 5. And you do want to write it in that order. You want to leave the y on the left side and you want to leave the x, move the x to the right side. From here, I'm going to manipulate this equation until it looks like slope intercept form. So I'm going to start by distributing. And in slope intercept form, I need my letter y to be all by itself. So I'm going to take this negative one and I'm going to add it to the other side. I'm going to add it underneath the 20 because those are like terms. Those are both just regular normal numbers. They are both constants. Um, and so I add it with the 20. And once I move that one, my letter Y is all by itself. And so I'm ready to say that this is my final answer. So this is how you find slope intercept form. Y equals negative 5X minus 19 is my final answer. Let's try one more together before you try your homework. Okay, so I, same concept. Um, I was given a slope and an ordered pair. And I'm going to use my altered slope formula where the twos have been taken out so that this is just the letter Y and that is just the letter X. My point has an X1, 5, which will go on the bottom with my letter X. And it has a Y1, 2, which will go on the top with my letter Y. Again, those should be the opposite sign of what they were in my ordered pair. So if it was a positive 5, it's a minus 5 down here. And if it was a positive 2, it's a minus 2 up here. And my slope in this problem was already a fraction. So I left it a fraction. And it was not negative, so I don't have to worry about negative signs. Once I have my setup all ready to go, I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to take my 3 and multiply it over here with my y minus 2. I'm going to take my x minus 5, and I'm going to multiply it up here with my 1. From here, we are manipulating the formula. Remember, if it helps, you can write the, the equation that you're going for down at the top of your paper. In this problem, we are trying to get y equals mx plus b. So the next thing I would do is distribute. Uh, now I need my y to be all by itself. When you have the choice of moving a number that's being multiplied or a number that's being subtracted, you should always move your adding and subtracting first. So I will move by six. I'm going to add six to both sides. And uh, as a last step, again, because the letter y cannot have anything in front of it, uh, I need to move this three. When you're moving something that's being multiplied, you're going to move it by division. But you do need to divide everything in the equation. So you cannot pick and choose what you want to divide. It's uh, all or nothing. You divide every single thing or you don't divide any of them. So I will need to divide in three places. Where the letter Y is, the threes will cancel. Where the letter X is, it's important. We were dividing by three. So that three is going to need to stay on the bottom of a fraction. Since we don't have any other number here, I can put a placeholder of 1 in front of my x, and that's going to give me a number in front of my x of 1 third, 1 over 3. So make sure that your 3 stays on the bottom of the fraction. Same thing for my uh, 1 over here. That is a 1 third, and it's going to stay a 1 third, and that's perfectly fine. Notice that my number in front of my x, which is my slope, is the same slope I started with. That's a good sign. That means we did something right. Um, and again, it's okay to get a fraction for your y-intercept. All right, this concludes our notes for today. Tomorrow we'll do um, some slope-intercept form that have a little bit more steps to get to the answer, um, but it's nothing that we haven't done before. So until then...